Hey everyone, today I'm going to review the ASUS ZenBook Pro Dual World 15 OLED model number UX582. First of all, big thanks to ASUS Singapore for providing this review unit on loan. Now my review will be from the perspective of a visual content creator, someone who is into digital art, graphic design, edits photos and videos. So I will talk about all those workflows. Now this video may be a bit long. If you want to save time, you can check out the text review that I have already written or use the timestamps provided to jump to different sections of this video. Here in Singapore, this laptop is only available in this configuration and the official retail price is 4,999 Singapore dollars. These are the items included in the box besides the laptop. There is this 240 watt charger which is about the size of this 6.7 inch phone but three times thicker. This is the ASUS ActivePen SA201H a detachable palm rest and this carrying case with nice fabric interior and there is this pen holder here. The ASUS ZenBook Pro Duo is a laptop with two displays. This is a 15.6 inch OLED display and this is a 14 inch IPS LCD display. This is how it looks on the side. This is actually the second model. The first model was released in 2019. That's the UX581. And there are obviously improvements to the design more specifically. This second display can now prop up at an angle, making it much easier to see. When I saw this dual display design a few years ago, I thought this was a gimmick but it's not a gimmick. You know how useful an external display is when it comes to productivity and multitasking? So this works like an external display except it's built into the laptop. So this laptop is actually the best multitasking laptop out there right now. I'm actually very surprised at how good it is when it comes to multitasking. So for example, you can have your main application up there and you can place up to three windows down here. You can have two windows or three windows. You can change the layout however you want and there are actually shortcuts for you to size the windows perfectly. The different ways you can configure the workspace is endless. So for example, with me, I usually have two windows explorers here. And at this corner, I can have a YouTube video playing, my email client or a music app. You can place anything here. And when I'm playing games, sometimes I can even have the walkthrough or game guide placed here. So you can even multitask when you're playing games. Resolution for the main OLED display is 4K UHD. So all the visuals are really sharp. Pixelation is not noticeable. By the way, both displays are touch screens. So the colors here are definitely not as good compared to the OLED display. And also you can see some visual differences. This display is glossy, whereas the display here is matte textured. And the colors on the OLED display are noticeably more vibrant compared to the LCD. This secondary display is mostly for placing your shortcuts, so you don't really need that level of color accuracy for shortcuts like this. Shortcuts to your folders, your email, your browser. Viewing angles are fantastic. The colors don't shift even when viewed from extreme angles. This is how it looks when you are working on the laptop. There is still a gap here because the LCD still has bezels. The bezel is quite thin, it's about half a centimeter. I wish the secondary display can prop up further because when I'm working, um, this angle is great, but when I need to look at the secondary display, sometimes I find myself having to move my head forward to look down. And if I look down for long periods of time, my neck can get tired. So it's not a big deal because most of the time, I don't look down at this area for long periods of time. This workspace is actually an extended workspace, it's treated as two separate displays. This is how it looks in Windows display settings. 
I prefer it this way because it's easier to resize the windows on the secondary display. If you want your app to go across the gutter here, you will have to resize the app manually. Anyway, um, it doesn't make sense to do this because when you have two displays like this, you will want to have your shortcuts be here accessible at all times. ASUS has included software to help you arrange the windows and the apps across these two displays very easily. So for example, let's say you want to push this web browser to the second display. All you have to do is tap the title bar here and drag your finger down and you can see the shortcuts will appear. Release it on the arrow and now the web browser is here. The other way to do this is to use the shortcut button to switch the window. Screenpad Plus is actually divided into three columns, one, two, and three. You can push the window into a single column or across two columns. There are actually shortcuts for you to do so. Same thing, just tap on the title bar and move down. You will see this arrow move down even further to the icon there, and you can see all these different layouts. So I'm going to push this window to this layout more specifically to the right corner. And when I release this, it's automatically resized here. And now I want to push this to the left corner. So just push it there. You can actually do a quick swipe to push the windows to the other display. This placement, switching of windows, layout and resizing the windows, uh, it works effectively and it's very intuitive, very easy to get used to. Let's take a look at the special integration with selected Adobe software, namely Photoshop, Premiere Pro, After Effects and Lightroom Classic. So this integration comes in the form of this extra control panel of shortcuts and it's not on by default, so you have to turn it on. You have to assess the shortcut here and tap on control panel. Control panel for Photoshop is currently turned off. So let's turn that on so that uh, next time I launch Photoshop, it can launch together with this control panel. So these are actually customizable shortcuts and these are the pre-programmed shortcuts that you can push onto the control panel. So you can actually have a dial, a rotating dial, you can have buttons, you can have sliders. I'm just going to leave this as default. You can customize where you want the buttons. One glitch I found is, let's say I want to push a vertical slider here. When I choose this, there is space there, but here it says there is no space. The main downside to this control panel is you cannot create your own keyboard shortcut. So let's say I want to set this vertical slider to adjust font size. Uh, here I can only choose from the pre-programmed shortcuts. If the shortcut you want is not here, then too bad. So let's select font size. The control panel will fill up the second display. And now I want to show you more glitches I discovered. I want to show you all these glitches because I want to show you the pros and the cons and the limitation of the control panel. These are actually things that ASUS can fix to improve user experience because if you have this working perfectly, it can really improve productivity significantly. All right, the first glitch that I found is this. So I want to use this dial to change the brush size and when I change the brush size, I cannot see the cursor update instantly on the display. I can see the numbers uh, jump on the palette here, but I cannot see the cursor update instantly. Whereas if I use this uh, bracket shortcut button here to increase the brush size, I can see the cursor update. So not being able to see the brush size cursor update instantly basically makes this useless. Next, I want to show you how I can change the font size using the vertical slider. So let me just select all the text and maybe push the font size down. Nothing seems to be happening, but there is actually change to the font size. Um, basically, the font is now so small that you cannot see anything. So font size changing doesn't work that great either. 
So it would be good if I can actually set the shortcut control shift angle bracket to adjust the font size, but I cannot do that because you cannot set keyboard shortcuts. Those single button shortcuts will work fine, but you can already assess those shortcuts with the keyboard, so these are kind of pointless. So it's not a big deal because I'm just going to turn off the control panel because I don't use this with Photoshop. What I can do is actually push all these palettes that are taking up space on the main screen down to the secondary display. Yep, so I can actually just hide the palettes here and use all the palettes here. This is a much better use of space and I use Adobe Illustrator a lot. I use a lot of palettes with Adobe Illustrator so I can actually fit this whole screen with palettes. And now let me show you Adobe Lightroom. The control panel here works better. So let me just go into the develop mode and hide all the palettes because now you don't need the palettes because all the controls are here and you can use the sliders to adjust the photo settings very easily. The control panel here is more useful compared to the one with Photoshop. This is Adobe Premiere Pro and the control panel here is exceptionally useful. So for example, I can use the dial here to zoom the timeline and I can use the other dial to scrub the timeline and this updates instantly. So these two are really useful. These are the shortcuts on the control panel for After Effects, which is an app that I do not use, so I cannot say much about how well these shortcuts are working. These two displays have support for stylus, and this is the ASUS SA201H Active Stylus, which means there is tilt and pressure sensitivity, and there is also palm rejection. It doesn't make sense to draw on the OLED display because this display will wobble and the feeling of the plastic pen tape on this glossy surface is not the best. You can draw if you want to, of course. You can take quick notes if you want to, but it's actually better to use the secondary display. At least here the display doesn't move. You get a stable surface to work on. It's also a better experience to draw on a matte textured surface. The initial activation force of this pen is higher than what I would prefer. Quick strokes like this are unable to taper nicely, so you can see the end, it's quite abrupt. And also there is problem when it comes to drawing with consistent pressure. You can see the thickness of the line, it will waver. So this is not good. I mean, this is definitely not for professional illustration, so I'm not going to fault the pen and the display performance when it comes to drawing. This is actually quite a good looking laptop. The design is very clean and simple. On the back, you see the grills for the air intake. Two long pieces of hard plastic to lift the laptop of the table and my hands are shaking because this is quite heavy. This is 2.34 kg. So when you have the display up, it will prop up the second display as well as prop up the laptop. By the way, ASUS has set the default power settings to shut down the computer when the lid is closed and when I open the lid, it will always restart. So that's quite irritating. So I have to set the settings back to let it sleep when the lid is closed. So the ports on this side are the power, full-size HDMI, these are the grills for the exhaust, that's a 3.5mm audio jack. On this side we have USB 3, Type-A, USB-C, Thunderbolt 3. Unfortunately there is no SD card reader. 
The positions of the USB 3 ports here is quite inconvenient. For example, if you have an adapter here, um, then there's no place for your mouse. And also if you want to use your mouse, try to avoid this area because when you are playing games especially, the air that comes out here is extremely hot. Keyboard layout is good. The trackpad or touchpad is on the right side, so this is not that good for left-handed users. Clicking mechanism is good. There is left and right click and double finger tap for the contextual menu. The trackpad also doubles as a number pad. Uh, this is the button for performance mode. You can switch between performance or non-performance. This is to swap the windows on the second screen with the main screen. This is to turn off the second screen and power button. You can also assess the number pad on the second screen. The main thing about this keyboard is there is no palm rest. So you have to use this laptop on a table where you can rest your palm. And when I'm tapping on this, um, it feels comfortable enough. Not having a palm rest is not an issue because we are already very used to using standalone keyboards that don't have palm rest anyway. The main difference is this keyboard is higher. So if you do need a palm rest, you can use the one that ASUS has included. The typing experience is good. The keys have good travel and feedback. You can definitely speed type on this keyboard. The keys are also backlit. Battery life is about four and a half hours and battery life will depend on the work you are doing. So this laptop actually comes with pretty good specifications. The processor is the Intel 10th generation i7 or i9 8 core processor. So it's quite powerful. It's able to handle all types of work that you throw at it. Uh, it's very capable when it comes to editing and exporting videos. There is 32 gigs of RAM, so um, that is definitely more than sufficient for the type of work that I do, uh, which is mostly graphic design, editing photos and videos. And usually while editing and exporting videos, I am doing some graphic design work. And this is how fast it takes to start up or restart the computer. The internal SSD speed is about 2.6 gigs per second, so that is quite fast. Apps can launch reasonably quick, and you can have multiple apps uh, and switch between them with no lag whatsoever. It's a powerful system. I mean, it's an expensive laptop, so you are really paying for the specs. Okay, let's switch to um, exporting this video project, which is just a very simple 4K UHD video with clips that I joined together without any special effects. Um, so to export a 10 minute 4K UHD video, it took this laptop one minute and 40 over seconds. Video editing process is very smooth. Scrubbing the timeline is very smooth. There is no lag. The thing that really surprises me is the video exporting time. The video export time is less than 20% of the length of the video project. Obviously, it's not going to have any issues when it comes to editing hundreds of raw photos. The NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3070 is a very capable graphics card. So gaming, more specifically, 4K gaming is possible. With Red Dead Redemption, I can get up to 40 frames per second. You can drop down the resolution for higher frame rates, but 40 FPS um, to me, it's still quite smooth and it is extremely enjoyable to game in 4K. I mean, the resolution, the details that I can see, um, it's terrific. And because this is an OLED panel, you get really good colors and contrast. When gaming, the fan noise is actually quite loud. Um, so 
it's best to use headphones or earphones when gaming. The speakers are downward facing. The audio quality is alright um, for downward facing speakers. And as mentioned much earlier, you can have your game guide on the secondary display as well. This is extremely useful for me. Alright, to conclude, this laptop is the very definition of a workstation, in this case a mobile workstation. The design looks good, the design is very functional, the keyboard is excellent, the selection of ports is quite good except for the missing SD card reader, and the specifications that you get is good. I mean this is a very powerful laptop, you do get what you pay for. In this case, for the type of work that I do, um, graphic design, digital art, editing photos, and YouTube videos like this, this laptop is an absolute overkill for the type of work that I do. I mean, you can buy laptops with similar specifications at a much lower price point. The main selling point here is the dual display, which is so good. For productivity. I mean I use the secondary display all the time. It is very useful. It is exceptionally useful and I think ASUS actually did a very good uh, implementation. The main downside is with some of the uh, Adobe integration. Um, they could actually ask actual uh, users of Adobe software and get feedback from those um, users to improve the Adobe integration. But other than that, ASUS, um, the ASUS driver for handling the layout, the resizing of the windows, uh, pushing the windows around, that software works much better than I expected. The fluidity when it comes to rearranging the windows, um, it's very smooth, very intuitive. Oh, and another thing I like about this laptop obviously is the 4K OLED display which looks terrific and has fantastic color accuracy. And the downsides, uh, let me just go through this long list of downsides. There is no micro SD card reader. The battery life is just four and a half hours which is to be expected for a laptop this powerful. The touchpad on the right side is not suitable for left-handed users, but if you use a mouse, then I guess it's um, all right. The customization for Adobe integration is lacking. You cannot configure specific keyboard shortcuts and some of the shortcuts don't work that well. This is an OLED display, so there is pulse wave modulation according to some other website that I have read when the brightness is below 80%. However, whether or not you can see PWM really depends on whether or not you can see PWM. Personally, for me, I don't see pulse wave modulation with this. Um, by default, when you close the lid, the computer will shut down, so you actually have to go into the pulse settings to change that configuration to have it sleep instead of shut down. There is a very noticeable visual difference between these two uh, displays because one is OLED and one is IPS uh, LCD. Poor placement of Thunderbolt 3 ports and the fans are quite loud when the system is stressed or when you are playing games. When it comes to exporting videos, um, the video will export so fast that the fans um, they won't kick in unless you are exporting for 30 minutes, right? So the fans actually only kick in when I'm gaming, but other than that, um, most of the time the fans are idling. So is this laptop worth the money? Here in Singapore, this is almost 5,000 Singapore dollars. In US currency, it's 2,008 to $3,000. So this is definitely quite expensive. Whether this is worth your money really depends on the type of work that you do. So only you have the answer. Let me give you something to think about. So take for example, uh, for me, when it comes to making casual videos like this to upload to YouTube, say for example, this video project is 20 minutes long. With this laptop, it's going to be able to export that video in under four minutes. Um, for me, 
I can afford to wait 30 minutes or one hour for the video to export because while the video is exporting, I can do some other work. So time is not that important because I can do other stuff while waiting for the video to export. But for people uh, who do need that level, that amount of power, uh, for people who are working against deadline, for people who do value multitasking and productivity, this is a very good option to consider. Let me know what you think about this laptop in the comment section below. And if you happen to be using this model or the previous model, the UX581, I would love to hear from you. Let me know what your experience is like. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video. Bye.